Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. Are you tired of my X99 motherboard reviews? No? Ok, here is yet another one. This time I'm testing this E5A99 motherboard. This motherboard can be found on AliExpress under different names such as Chido, Ottermiter or something like that. The motherboard is very similar to Machinist X99 M9A, but yet they are different. So, let's start with a quick overview of the motherboard layout and the technical specification. My motherboard has chipset Q85, but you may receive Q87, Z87 or even Z90 series, maybe also H series. Here you can see 4 DDR4 memory slots, here we have 6 SATA ports, 24 pin power, 8 pin power, and then here we have 1 PCI Express X1, another PCI Express X1, 2 PCI Express X16, 2 M.2 slots for SSD drives, this one is for the SATA SSDs, this one is for the NVMe SSDs, and here we also have an M.2 slot for Wi-Fi Bluetooth adapters. For the fan headers, we have 4-pin CPU fan header over here, 3-pin fan header here, one 3-pin fan header over here, and additional 4-pin fan header over here. Now, for these connectors we have buttons and LEDs, USB 2.0 for the front panel, USB 3.0 for the front panel, over here we have COM port and audio port for the front panel. What's interesting is that over here we have a GLPC1 header, which seems to be identical to the Machinist X99 motherboards. The rear I.O. is very basic and very standard for Chinese X99 motherboards. We have simple audio exit, here we have an Ethernet jack, two USB 3 ports, four USB 2 ports and two PS2 ports. Finally, we can also take a look at this VRM heatsink that has a built-in fan. This fan is connected through a two-pin fan connector, one is available over here and one is available over here. These fans cannot be controlled, cannot be monitored, and the fan is rotating with constant speed. The voltage on this connector is 5 volts. Ok, so I am done with the technical specification, let's talk about the BIOS. Usually these kinda no-name motherboards come with the worst possible BIOS, but not in this case. Much to my surprise, Chiida E5A99 has one of the best BIOS I've seen from China. So by default, the stock BIOS has clear CMOS function, RAM timings, resizable bar, PCI Express verification, ECC mode, headless boot, and we also find some settings for TPM 2.0. I don't know if it actually works or no, but we have the header, we also have the BIOS settings, so I hope to test this motherboard with the TPM 2.0 module that the BIOS I engineer is working on for me. Unfortunately though, not everything is as bright. The sleep mode does not work on the motherboard and restore on power loss for some stupid reason is hidden by default. I have modified the BIOS and unlocked the settings and they do work, so a restore on power loss works on this E5A99 motherboard, but for that you need to use modified BIOS. Smart fan configuration is also not ideal. We have the typical Chinese situation when it works only for the first CPU fan header and only with 4-pin fans. This 3-pin fan header and this 3-pin fan header are not controlled and not monitored. This additional 4-pin fan header has smart fan options in the BIOS, but they are locked by default. I have unlocked them in my modified BIOS and tested it Unfortunately, the smartphone function doesn't work, but at least we have an option to set the constant speed for the fan connected to this header. It works only for the 4-pin fans. CPU power consumption sensor on this motherboard doesn't really work. It shows us some weird values which are not true. This is a typical Chinese X99 issue. On the other hand, VRM temperature sensor seems to be working and seems to be providing correct values. The four memory slots are working in full quad-channel memory configuration and for tests I used four uh, desktop memory sticks like this, four 8GB each, uh, and I have also tested uh, with ECC registered memory. So I have four sticks like this, 32GB each, it's uh, ECC registered memory. I have also tested a couple more other memory sticks and did not get any issues whatsoever. Quad-channel memory configuration worked with every CPU I tested. 
Now, PC Express X1 slots are working as well, and these X1 are connected to the cheap set, so the speed is limited to PC Express 2.0. Much to my surprise, this first one has enough power to uh, use such graphics card. This is NVIDIA GT710 with PCI Express X1 connector. This one, which is located further from the power, is not good enough. And if I install this uh, GT710 into this second PCI Express X1 slot, it's detected, but it doesn't work. On the other Chinese motherboards, I was not able to get this graphics card work without external power, even in the first PC Express X1. So this is a good sign. The X16 slots are fully functional, and both of them are full PC Express X16 3.0, so both of them are connected to the CPU. Also, PC Express buffication works, and you can bufficate one or both of these slots into X8, X8, X4, 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 or X8, X4, X4, basically whatever you need. So even though we have only one M.2 slot for SSD drives, you can still install four extra SSDs into this slot slot. Regarding the M.2 slots, as expected, the first one works with the SATA SSDs only. For example, such Samsung EVO SATA M.2 SSD works in this slot. And the second header is only compatible with the PCI Express NVMe SSDs, for example, such as this one Crucial P3. Then, under the NVMe M.2 slot, we have M.2 slot for Wi-Fi cards. Here you can install Wi-Fi cards which are not CNVI, so I have tested with Intel 9260. These SATA ports are not equal. The first four are SATA 3.0 and these two additional ones are SATA 2.0. On AliExpress you can also find a revision of this motherboard without these two additional SATA 2.0 ports. Also, if you install a SATA M.2 SSD into this slot, one of the SATA 3.0 headers will not work. I don't remember which one of them. So far so good, but how about the VRM or the power delivery system? Here, much to my surprise, I found identical configuration to Machinist X99 MR9A. And that means that we have the standard four-phase PWM controller, which is UP1649Q. Only three phases are utilized, and each phase has a doubler, so we have six phases in total. Some will say that these are six-phase VRM, others will say it's three-phase with three extra fake phases, but whatever. Each of the phases has three MOSFETs, two SM450-03N and one SM450-08N. This configuration is good enough for EFI 2697v3 with Turbo Boost Unlock. With my testing where I used flower-like Intel Box Cooler and with this VRM fan enabled, I didn't register any temperature around the VRM higher than 70 degrees Celsius. In hardware info I see higher temperatures, but that's expected, because there you can see internal temperatures under the heatsink, while I can only measure the external temperature around the heatsink and on the heatsink. This tiny VRM fan on my particular motherboard works flawlessly. I could not even hear this fan, it just spins there and does its job. I don't know how long it will last, but in my case, for now, it works with no issues. Of course, I would prefer not to have it, but as of right now, I don't have any complaints. Since the VRM was tested with the Turbo Boost Unlocked EFI 2697v3, I need to mention that the original BIOS, the modified BIOS and Turbo Boost Unlocked BIOS options for Qi the E5A99 motherboard are all available in my Mi 899 application. So if you want to unlock some hidden options in the BIOS or you want to do Turbo Boost Unlock, you can do that using Mi 899 and the FPT or Flash Programming Tool application for that. Now let's talk about CPUs with just 28 piece express lanes, such as i7-5820K or i7-6800K. Much to my surprise, Chiyida E5A99 is the first Chinese X99 motherboard that has all PCI Express lanes routed correctly. So with the 28 PCI Express lane CPU, the first PCI Express X16 slot, 
is x16. The second PCI Express x16 slot is x8, and the M.2 slot still works as M.2 PCI Express NVMe x4. So we have all 28 PCI Express lanes routed and available. Overclocking with i7-5820K or any other CPU that have unlocked CPU clock multiplier is not possible. Unfortunately for that we would need a custom BIOS and I don't yet want to test BIOS from iEngineer on this motherboard because I'm not sure that I will be able to revive it. First I want to test TPM 2.0 header and then I can break this motherboard with no regrets. For the conclusion, I would like to say that even though Chiyinda E5 A99 has positively surprised me, it comes with a, one of the best BIOS options, it also has a very good layout where you have basically everything you could wish from a budget X99 motherboard and the quality seems to be decent, the only things I could complain is that the sleep mode doesn't work, overclocking doesn't work and CPU power consumption sensor is not indicating correct values. I cannot guarantee the quality of entire batch. My motherboard works fine, but it has no indication that your motherboard will work exactly the same. Even if you buy exactly the same motherboard from exactly the same seller, you may get many different issues while my motherboard works with no problems. That's why if you decide to buy one, this is your risk and your decision. I always recommend to first check your local stores, then check the second-hand market and only then go to AliExpress. This particular motherboard I hope to test with the TPM 2.0 module in the near future and the update will be available on my channel. For now though, that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and valuable. Bye for now and see you in the next videos.